evening everybody welcome to masterworks my name is Jason Meyer and tonight it's gonna be a little bit different in that we've got um, some photographs from a Sherry McGraw demonstration um, they're not from me but they're from our friend Sue R so I think Sue catches these sometimes so Sue if you catch these thank you so much for all of that appreciate it and Susan and Cindy hello 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 so um, we're just in class we're just getting our painting started and so I thought I'd take this opportunity and um, let's go through it and talk about how a master might see and start different than we do okay so let's see let's see if we can hit the right buttons here and oh yeah perfect 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 so Susan and I were discussing um, this uh, in class today in the office hours and notice how open everything is even while she has the quote unquote finish in there oops there we go how you see how op much openness is left but she still has the quote-unquote finish and you can easily see the movements through there so I wanted you to get this in your eye um, before we took a look at the demo so here's the setup Here's the setup. So in your mind, on your canvas, what are you going to do? How are you going to start this? Right? If, if you had this, this set sitting in front of you, you can get your paints all laid out. You're ready to go. What are you going to do? Okay, if you really dig in there, then the answers that we see Sherry provide will mean a lot more to you. That's a pretty cool old tabletop they got there, huh? Or maybe it's a pew. I don't know what it is. That looks pretty cool. But pretty simple. We started with a burnt umber rub out. We learned how to do burnt umber her start isn't much more than just kind of a rub out as she's finding where everything goes but immediately she went from the start to the finish immediately That's a big piece of white yellow paint. So she got size and placement in and then where's the finish gonna be? The biggest, strongest, lightest thing. She just went ahead and put that in. So as we take a closer look at this, let's ask ourselves a little something. Okay, so we see stain, rub of the canvas, and she builds a little cut, but immediately, bang. But what colors do we have so far? Well, there's quote unquote white, which slips off to yellow, and then we slip into green. So we're basically yellow and green on everything that's down here so far. All right, well, let's just stick that in our back pocket and, and, and see if that turns out to be anything. Let's just, let's just wait and see. So 
So do you see the greens we were talking about now and all the variety of greens and, and yellows? So there's like a gray green and then a, a more colorful green, a little more of a blue green surrounded by a yellowish gray yellow. And then this is more of a blue gray green. You see, so it's very well organized. So wait a minute, let's just double check here. Is there any red in this painting yet? Nothing, right? All yellow green. Look at what we're starting to get now. But the red she starts with, does it come screaming out of there? Or does it just move in next door to the green without hardly making a peep? Pretty quiet, isn't it? Pretty quiet. Okay, so that's interesting. That's interesting. So she got size and placement. And then almost immediately she had a big, gnarly white finish on there, didn't she? And then she's worked around that. She's established this color. And there seems to be a whole yellow-green harmony happening back here. And then all of a sudden we're introduced to some red. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a high-end green right here. A couple of spots that have been put down. All right, then we're moving forward. So our white. Yeah. You see how it, it just steps off and with this organization? And how clearly you can think the thinking. Where do you think this red is headed? Well, she told us. Because she jumped to the finish with this. She didn't walk one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I hope I end up in the right place. No, she said, this is where I'm starting. This is where I'm ending. All right, so now I've just got to fill in the middle connect the two okay so this is just such a perfect example of putting in the big pieces but not putting in the big pieces of oh this is the biggest piece in here the big pieces of the idea the big pieces of her vision she has for the finish and it's a painter's vision it's a vision of value it's a vision of color it's a vision of edges it's a vision of more to less of less to more so again this is raw, well, not raw, it's stained canvas, but this is the board was like that when it started. In other words, there's still a lot left unfinished, vague, not worked out, but she didn't let that stop her from going ahead and going, this is my statement. If she was writing a paper, she might be saying, this is my rough draft. I'll be refining that later, but let's get our main points down. Can you see the difference in paint quality in what she's calling foreground versus her background? It's a bit subtle in some places, but notice this paint quality going from stain of the board to really thin stain to this kind of flatter gray to this flatter, more colorful stuff to the texture builds, picks. 
you see there's a, a rise in paint quality. Now this is most, but I get the feeling this is going to be a balance between this and, well, let's see. Let us see. So it's almost like she's got a beautiful little S curve happening in here. I wonder if that was an accident. Um, I assure you it wasn't. Okay, this, if this isn't the end, I know we're getting close. But she just began her painting. She did this in front of a live audience, right? The, these pictures are from one of the audience members, our friend Sue. So she started with a little rub, rub out, then she immediately established the finish. So in other words, there seems to be a little process of, okay, where do I start? Okay, this is my start. Now where do I end? Okay, this is where I end. Now let's connect those two. Consider that as a method of working. Okay, it may not be natural, maybe very unnatural, but again, it's like you're painting a movement. I want to go from here to here. Where does this red run begin? Where does the red run end? Well, it goes from red to pink, right? So we got a little red. We see it happening, a little, little peak over there. But then we start growing all of a sudden, start growing, growing, and then we're almost to white. So that's a run. But we saw that she started with these reds. And the next thing we saw was this. Then came everything in the middle. Okay. So again, just an idea while you're working. Wanted to show you the palette after the demo. You see all these greens and yellows and how close and quiet they are. Some of those reds were pretty quiet to start with, but then it built. Right, the build of the yellow, of the green. Anyway, I thought after watching the demo, maybe we should look at some of um, her finished work, right? And after seeing that, what about the journey? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, guys. That's the same color. But what a completely different feeling. You guys, so quantity, values, it can change everything. But this is a similar, similar setup here. Look how this r red disappears and comes out. And then, you know, it just doesn't fade away. You guys pick up all that subtlety? And there are a lot of times we like to light up what's behind, but if we did that, could this carry and have the weight that it does? No. So nothing works 100% of the time. So you always want to know, how do you want this to look? Where do you want the viewer's eye to go? And then you problem solved, solved based on that. Again, I think we're in some very similar colors here. But now we, we've shifted further over to that yellow orange, it seems to me. Right before it was just red, pink, and now it's like that's climbing up to orange and yellow in that very light light. 
So again, a, another completely different feel. I, you, do you guys see these brush strokes? I mean, when I see this stuff, it, it, it just, oh, give me a paintbrush. I want to go paint. I want to go paint. But look at the journey between that thin, thin paint and then this wonderful. But even though you see the busyness and the activity of these strokes, it's basically all green, isn't it? Whereas the value difference over here is much more. So become aware of that. But kind of, you know, if we did this kind of stroke with this sort of value, that's probably going to be way too much. Okay. Your voice uh, yelling for the home team in the championship game is one thing. Inside at the dinner table, that's something else. Look at that beautiful stroke right there. Mm. Just so, so juicy. Do we see the similar color again? Again, I just want to show you how one character can show up again and again and again in different kinds of circumstances and this color now means something completely different in this setup. Completely different. I think this one's absolutely gorgeous. I love this. I love this. The effects she got of the old metal and everything back here is just, it's amazing. It's amazing. These shapes, look at these lights. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And even though this might at first look chaotic, look how quiet all of, all this activity here, it seems scattered everywhere. It's actually relatively focused across the canvas. These couple of things spill, but other than that, it's almost all right there. Huh. A little different, a portrait. But what do we see here? What do we see? We see the white of the shirt. Right, the color of the hand. And then we take a break during the beard. And then we have another little show here. And then we take a break. And we have one kind of last hurrah around there. So in a way, it's like, here we go, break, okay, here we go, break, break, and then this is even less. But look how that's the same, that's the same, that's the same. And when I'm saying it's the same, I, I, I'm not insulting or anything, but I, I want you to see the simplification of this. And the simplification is what gives this painting the power, right? That, that's not an insult for those of you who are unaware, but this is a powerful image because of such simplification. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think that might be a good place to leave it tonight. I can find my way back to the camera. So 
I hope you enjoyed that and that it informs you a little bit on um, as you work on your painting, as, as you start it. And hopefully it encourages you maybe to, to start a little, a little different, right? We've studied for two weeks on our works. We've studied the composition. We've talked about color. You did a little color study. So you know where the finish is. You know what the finish is. So get it placed on there loosely, jump to it, and then build that base so that it supports that finish. And you got a masterpiece. All right, everybody. So thank you every so much for watching tonight. Uh, hope you have a wonderful evening. Uh, tonight is Monday night, so starting tomorrow morning, we'll be back with Morning Jump Start right here at 8 a.m. And then um, we'll have Sketch Club tomorrow night. So thank you, Susan. I uh, hope that helped you out with some of those things we were talking about today. I was thinking about you when uh, I was looking at Sher Sherry today. So I hope that uh, encourages you to go, go forward. Go forward and play. Play seriously. Some serious play. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much.